On this episode of South Coast Spotlight, a hands-on science fair gets children excited to learn. See the sky fill up with colorful kites. Join us as we celebrate Garden Month with a surprising finale. And see how one local couple changes the community with a new business venture. All that and more coming up right now on South Coast Spotlight. Welcome to South Coast Spotlight. I'm Juliandra Durkin from TV Santa Barbara. Making learning fun has never been truer than at a local children's science fair where using all five senses brings science to life. For some kids, science is really confusing, making them run to the playground instead of hitting the books. But when you show kids how much fun science can be, concepts like magnetism, gravity, and electricity become a theme park of excitement. We're going to teach you about electricity, and then we're going to teach you about magnets. And believe it or not, they're related. <laughs> we are focusing on being a STEM school and making science a priority at our school. We are piloting the FOSS program, and everybody at our school does science on a on a regular basis. And so this shows all the students all the science that they can do. Children are naturally curious and love to experiment. Early childhood provides perfect opportunities for adults to help kids develop a love for learning and especially a love for science. It just rolls right off. Hey, both of you can do it. Pull hands and just do it. So look, is it plugged into the wall? Is it touching anything at all? So these invisible lines actually make electricity. So this material remembers that it wants to be straight after you heat it up in hot water. Isn't that cool? Kids learn best by hands-on experience, so it is important to focus science lessons around things that they can see, hear, and even touch so that they can connect with science in a very real way. Science engages students, it makes, it puts everything together, it makes the world real to them and their natural curiosity comes out and it complements everything that we do in our learning in our classroom. So don't try this at home, okay? Because it will shock you? It can shock you, yes. Oh my gosh! Do it, do it again, again, do it again! So how that actually works is that the bell creates um, sound waves. And the sound waves kind of look like how this slinky looks right now. It travels through the air into your eardrum, into your ear, so you can hear it. Science is real, and that's and so but by doing hands-on science, I just it puts it in a context that makes the kids realize, in fact, that they are all scientists. And also having a chance to see um, young scientists in the community makes them realize I can be a scientist for life if I want. You know, watch, watch my hair. Oh. Science has brought many wonderful innovations to our lives. Because science starts with the type of curiosity that kids have, the way we teach science to our kids really does matter. Can you guys hear that now? I didn't even have to hold it up close to your ear, did I? Well, we're just so excited to have all the families involved, the students involved, and everyone, if you walk around, is totally engaged. And as you can say, there's so much laughter and excitement. By providing opportunities for children to observe and create science experiments, we encourage and motivate them to become the next generation of innovators. Santa Barbara is full of hardworking people who love the community and want to make a difference. See how one couple is changing the community with their new business venture. When we knew we wanted to start our own business and knowing that we wanted to get into the customer service field of things, um, we started doing research and we wanted to find a good model and a good company that we could follow knowing what our, what our passion was, was the customer service and what we needed was the industry. When I was a teacher I absolutely loved my parents and the kids that I worked with and I gave all my heart to them and um, transferring over to owning our own small business, you know, it's been a different type of realm to work in but uh, still connecting with the people is the number one thing for me. I was a residential home builder for, for four years, two, two in high school and two into college. Um, we're, we built custom homes, so I had my hands on all the different aspects of home construction, from 
um, you know, putting up uh, all the framing, all the drywall, we ran all the electrical, we hung cabinets, we did all the painting, roofing, etc. Um, from there, I got interested in construction management and business management, and that's what I went to school for. It's nice going out to somebody's house and seeing a, a quick change that you could actually look at and stare at and feel and touch. That's the rewarding part uh, for me and why I got into construction and why I still like construction. One of the cool things about the franchise compared to starting our own company on our own was that they had everything set out for us to do. So we literally like have a checklist of like from starting to go into these orientations and then like what do we do after that and so it made starting our own business for first-time business owners like a hundred times easier. So we didn't start the business to paint people's homes or to paint people's businesses. We wanted to start the business to be in the customer service industry. We just use painting as our outlet. At Fresh Coat, we follow the 333 rule. We try to schedule a quote with you within three minutes. We do the quote within three days and the work will always be scheduled within three weeks. We don't try to be the lowest cost painter out there. Cost is really important to us. But we, we take that focus and we dedicate it towards the customer service and the, and the quality side of things. Um, and that, I think, is what is going to set us apart. You know, for that 5 or 10% difference in cost, you can get a 50% increase in customer service and a 50% increase in quality as well. It's all about being on time, finishing on time, being reliable, trustworthy showing people that this is this is more than just a painting company this is a customer service oriented business finding good employees um, i think really makes a difference in the business as well because they're on site with the customer much longer than we are and so making sure we're going through that process of finding professional and quality painters and that they understand that yes their job is painting but also to have a great focus on customer service I had met the Santa Barbara Boys and Girls Club at the Santa Barbara Chamber. I was involved in the Boys and Girls Club when I was in college in Waterloo, Iowa. Um, and Caroline Brown, the, the director here, had approached me afterwards and uh, she was saying, you know, for, for their anniversary they want to do some modernizations uh, to the club, which included a bunch of interior paintings. So we, we wanted to have that relationship and develop that, that relationship as best as we can. So absolutely, we, we took advantage. and. Um, try to do the best job we can inside. For me, being more in touch with the community is the best part of it. We are giving back to the community and giving back to our own community. I agree, like being involved just in the, in the community is the best part about it. Community members with a love of gardening surprise us on State Street with a flower flash mob and share the importance and beauty of Garden Month. What happens when you take a truck full of flowers, a group of devoted volunteers, and a partnership with Santa Barbara's Public Gardens to City Hall? This happens. It's what they call a flower flash mob. the wealth of gardens we have here in Santa Barbara. There are so many different styles of gardens. So it's wonderful that you can just get out, experience it, and take a little bit of that home and just to value how much gardening brings to our lives. After City Hall, they took their enthusiasm to the streets of Santa Barbara. I loved it and it's so great to give flowers to everyone. It reminds me of my teen when I used to be uh, you know, love child. Still am, even though I'm older. <laughs> <laughs> you might be wondering why would five gardens get together with their executive directors to give away a bunch of free flowers. Besides to have a lot of fun, it was to raise awareness for May being Santa Barbara's Public Garden Month. We started this uh, as a one day event to celebrate National Public Garden Day, but we decided that it was so popular that we wanted to do it for a whole entire month. We decided we wanted to figure out a way to celebrate that together and to help promote each other rather than compete with each other. This was such a wonderful opportunity for us to jump on board, to take advantage of all the wonderful publicity that the partnership has been exposed to. We decided we wanted to work together to help promote uh, our public gardens. And that's what May Public Garden Month is all about. Casa del Herrero, Lotus Land, Rancho La Patera and Stowhouse 
Alice Keck Park and the Santa Barbara Botanic Gardens invites you to come for a tour today. We've got over 50 activities going at all different gardens and all around the, the city. And our website, so that you can see all the activities, is sbpublicgardens.org. And um, so we're handing out flowers to people and uh, letting them know about Public Garden Month. We all know the song, Let's Go Fly a Kite, from the Mary Poppins movie, right? Well, now that song comes to life in Santa Barbara for the annual Santa Barbara Kite Festival. For nearly 30 years, Santa Barbara has hosted a kite festival that many people appreciate as being kid-friendly and community-oriented. It is one of many local opportunities that reaches kids and adults alike. So what's your name? Now I have four kids from the after-school program that I run. We have a nonprofit, and we just thought we'd get them out onto the, the grassy knoll flying kites today. This is Yaritza, and this is Jimena, and they're from the Santa Barbara School of Squash. What do you think is the best part of this festival? Hi, my, I'm actually not flown a kite since I was a little kid, so this is kind of fun for me. <laughs> In addition to being a fun activity for getting out of the house and into the sun, kite flying has a long history across many cultures. I'm a kite maker, kite designer. I get I get my visa as a professional kite flyer. Uh, this kite is a Indian fighter kite, and you can control them. It's made out of uh, paper and tapered bamboo. And you can really control the kite. That's the kind of kite they use in India for flying kite as a sport. Because every time you tug on the kite, the wings goes back like a bird. And when you release it, it flies. So it's almost flapping wings. So you put this kite up there, and moment you put the kite up there from your rooftop, not in the park. People come with the other kites and chase you, and they try to cut your tail. So every country has one kind of kite. Like here, they have the diamond-shaped kite. These kites are made out of paper and bamboo, according to the climate of the country. So India is very hot, very little wind, so they fly these kites. Here, it's windy, and the moisture, they fly nylon kites. Kite flying is family-oriented and a great exercise. Chasing the kite tail was an entertaining game to watch, and parents were glad their kids were outside in the sun doing something new while running off pent-up energy. Okay, there it is in the sky, go get it! We're just coming out to have a fun day. Uh, my daughter Sophia and my son Charlie is out chasing kite tails. Oh, I think it's great. I think it's nice to have everybody come out and, and the kids are involved and doing something and out of the house and it's good. So we'll definitely be back. So whether you are young or simply young at heart, the Santa Barbara Kite Festival is an event full of colorful action that will bring a smile to your face. It's very much, you know, part of it, like you're, you're right there making left, right and center, you know. Man's dream is flying kite, flying, you know, and it's the extension to your life. You know, you cannot fly, but yes, you can, you almost feel like you're up in the air with the kite. Well, that does it for this episode of South Coast Spotlight. If you have any ideas for future episodes, email us at info at tvsb.tv.